I'm hijacking Johnny's story <gasps> history. Okay. Here. Take that. That, all right, now put, now I'm, I'm going to take my tin hat and I'm going to put it on my head. Ah. And I'm going to help tell you. Put yours on your oh, head. Oh, okay. 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 I'm good. No, Pretend time. One. I didn't give you one. Ah. Uh. I'm going to tell you a story that involves a lot of internet conspiracy Ooh. at the height of internet conspiracy. Intrigue. Next to Ugly Parents. Welcome back, sports fans, to another episode of Ugly Third. Today's story is not Johnny's, it is Shrem's. So I'll start team, I'll start without a team. Shrem's, take it away. What? There was a name that replaced there. (laughs) What did he say? Okay. This jersey exists as the 2007 All Star. I I want I want to actually before you roll into this, can I can we compare that? uh, All right, Jersey Cam. Oh God, these are the same jersey, but authentic versus replica. Which good luck finding. Here's our microphone. Still. Oof. Big oof. So Reebok was going to start making printed crests. Okay, Jersey Cam, let's go to something that doesn't make any sense. Wow. This which, one, one which one do you want? This one, the one I'm holding I'm, right I'm, now. I'm showing you that now one. You are, that they were going to start doing printed crests in order to save weight like they did the printed shoulder patches. And uh, we all know how well those printed shoulder patches have held up. Yeah. And uh, this is extra light and extra thin. You can see with the, uh, the jock tag that it's a standard. Shrems somehow is the picture in picture is great. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's the cutting edge of technology. There it's it a proper authentic. So his stars are not printed like mine are. It's a bike strap. Bike strap. They are stitched stars where my, mine are not. The logo is fully embroidered. As is the shoulder patch. I am so impressed right now. This, this is garbage. Can you imagine? Come, come, come back, Phil. Come back. Come back to where? Come, us. I was going to very dramatically go like that, but like now I feel like a time. But he did. It. Well, everybody gets it. Can you imagine weighting a player down like this with a? Oh my God! They're going to be like nine percent slower. <sighs> okay. So 2007, All Star Game. We're getting into Reebok. We're moving away from CCM Coho. Um, we're introducing to the fans what the future, at least the next future. decade, of uh, the NHL jersey scene is going to look like. On the surface, not bad. Good weight. Maybe Except a little bit lighter than the CCMs, but overall a good quality. If you get the other ones. If you get, if you get the other ones. But, uh, that that all-star game isn't without controversy and it's because if you can believe it they allowed the fans to get involved (gasps) in the voting process democracy in my nhl well hear me out this jersey existed but this player in this jersey did not and I spent the money on an authentic because this is something that I hope one day to stand next to Gary Bettman at an at an All Star game, get a picture with him, just so he can see that this does exist. I <laughs> imagine that Gary. I that's that it was purely based on spite, but I imagine this is one of very few, if any, that even exists. I had it custom made. This is Rory Fitzpatrick. Do you know him? And the name's familiar, but you only because probably I'm don't because the year in which this took place, he was with the Vancouver Canucks, bottom pairing defenseman. But the thought process came up with, what if we sent a a good guy to the All Star game, not based on stats, but based on being a good guy. So basically, that age old story where you ask the internet to decide to make a decision for you, right? And they decide to troll you into oblivion instead. We're in the infancy of the internet at this point. YouTube is just becoming a thing. So 
you're not going to get the publicity. Twitter is just becoming a thing. All of these things that we come to know as commonplace today didn't necessarily exist. iPhone in, came out in 2007. So right. That, yeah. in, in our daily lexicon, did not exist. Indubitably. So, leading up to the All-Star Game, people get this crazy idea. We want to vote in, and we want to make sure that a average, hard-working player makes it to the All-Star Game. Johnny Everyman makes the NHL 100%. All-Star Game. And we've got this bottom pairing defender in Vancouver that fits the bill, and that's Rory Fitzpatrick. Patrick Fitzrory. Right. He he is he is your average everyday NHL player. Not a lot of points, not a lot of penalties, just a good solid bottom pairing guy. So the campaign starts with a website, boatferrori.com. I couldn't find a screen capture in an uh. archive. I couldn't find anything. But I did find a few things. Phil, when you're done with your homework over there, if you could put the, uh, uh, oh, this the slide up there. Yeah. Put that up there for me. You start this grassroots campaign in December 2016 when, when polling opens. You have people who are out there pushing for this guy. I remember, vote for Rory, he would vote for you. Right. I do remember Very that. Joe Quimby. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing about the NHL website at this time. You are free to vote for whoever you want to as many times as you want to. Uh, as long as you fill out the form on the website in full. You couldn't just go in there and choose Rory, hit submit. You had to fill out the whole thing. You could do it as many times as you want to. And if you learn anything from the internet, it's that when people put their mind to something, they're going to do it. The next best thing is leaving the same graphic up for far too long. That's the other thing I've learned from the internet. And we're back. Fitzpatrick rolls into winter break for the NHL, sitting in second place. And I'll prove it to you. <laughs> Go ahead, Phil. The next slide on that, uh, on that presentation. We're making Phil work. Um, and I apologize for the quality. <laughs> this is the best that I can do. A screen cap. Versus. From versus, of versus. course. Versus. Um, he heads into the NHL winter break second. Top two <laughs> players in this category go to the All-Star game. Okay. The NHL has realized that there's a mistake. They have, they have allowed people on the internet to do something, and they've come together in great quantities and are doing it. That's a problem. Because this is supposed to be a game for the best players on the planet. Take it seriously, Internet. And that's what Don Cherry goes off about. He Take is, it seriously, Internet. He, he is he is livid as Don Bunch Cherry of jerks. is. He goes out on this massive tirade, and this this whole idea is that you are you, Rory Fitzpatrick. They're making fun of you. This is a joke, and you're a front and center of that joke. It's not entirely wrong, but no, at the same it's time, it's good-natured. It's not. So this is, where, this is where we stood heading into Christmas of 2016. Over that holiday, there is an unprecedented amount of votes, not for Rory Fitzpatrick but for the guy in third place. I believe it was Nick Lidstrom. Oh. But in that time, we start seeing the campaigning coming a little bit more hot and heavy. Phil, are you able to play a video in that slide? Oh, that's what that is, a video. It is uh, a video. Scott Niedermeyer. He claims that he's a hard-working defenseman. But the Minneapolis Star Tribune describes Niedermeyer's skating as effortless. Do you really want to see the effortless Scott Niedermeyer at the All-Star Game? Isn't there a better, more hard-working choice? This ad paid for by Roy Fitzpatrick for NHL All-Star. This is a 17-year-old smear campaign against a Hall of Fame Scott Niedermeyer, the most decorated defenseman, perhaps, in NHL history. That's spectacular. They did one for Lidstrom, too, because he was right behind Rory Fitzpatrick. Okay? 
But like I said, over that winter break, something happened, and there is a massive influx of voting. So either that got out to Detroit and, hey, vote Nick Lidstrom, or the NHL was trying to rig it by pumping up Nick Lidstrom, and then it's not a problem. Rory Fitzpatrick lost on his own. I noticed you're wearing your tin hat as well. Yes. Something happens in those two weeks that the NHL, two-ish weeks the NHL is on, on winter break. So, we get back to the other side, 2017. Nick Lidstrom has an unprecedented jump in the standings, pushing Rory Fitzpatrick down to third. As we go through the rest of the process, he remains below that top two line, doesn't get voted into the NHL All-Star mm. Game. Campaign for nothing. <sighs> About a decade later, we find ourselves in the exact same shoes. Post Bodie McBoatface. You can't give people the opportunity to do anything. No, on the no, I don't ask the internet for any opinion. To ruin it. They deliver, they go out of there. There's so many great examples that I'm not going to say because I don't want us to get flagged. Right. Ten years later, we find ourselves in the exact same position. The 2016 All-Star Game in Nashville. You allow the fans to vote for who should be in the All-Star Game. And here we are again. Flip it. John Scott. I'm no fan of what that's Six true. foot eight, a goon. Doesn't have more than 20 points in his career as an NHLer. Finds himself in the All-Star voting. He's playing in Phoenix at the time. No, they were Arizona at the time. Playing in Arizona. He's got so much momentum that something unprecedented happens. He gets traded to Montreal. Mm, a twist. A twist. He goes from a Western Conference team to an Eastern Conference team. Problem. You can't do that. If you're voted into the All-Star game, how is he going to play for the Western All-Stars mm. if he's on an Eastern team? He's no Bo Horvat. Furthermore, he goes to Montreal. They bury him in the minors. He's mm. immediately assigned to the St. John's Ice Caps. Far out as you can get. So the internet, who had voted him in successfully, loses their collective mind. As we should. Finds in the bylaws that it doesn't state anywhere that an NHL all-star player has to be in the NHL <laughs> at the time. <laughs> they bring these bylaws to the surface, present them to the NHL. At this point, Twitter and all of those things are all mainstream for us. The NHL is feeling the pressure of another Rory Fitzpatrick. They allot a spot for John Scott in an All-Star game, but he's not a Western All-Star. He's not an Eastern All-Star. So they give him his own jersey. And that's the jersey that you see right there. Really? Yeah. So what team did he play on? He played, I think he officially played for the Western All-Star team. Okay. But because he wasn't a Western All-Star at that time, we had to go with something completely on his own. Mm. So they kind of had to make a, a slight difference. They, they kind of had to make something for John Scott. Um, that that intrigues. I did not know that, that it, they, this is something different. I, they I just figured he was is. on one of the teams and that was it. I believe, or or maybe, I have to go back and check now. Now I'm second-guessing what I, what I read. But I, I thought I had read that because he was in this nowhere, no man's land type thing. He had to go forward with whatever the NHL gave him. Um, the last piece of all this is that the NHL took to Twitter and they said, you can vote for the All-Star Game MVP. This I remember. And you have to do it through Twitter. Well, you've already tried to screw the fans over once. Who do you think they're voting for for the John Scott? Scott. John Scott. Wins a million dollars. Good for him. Scores two goals and beats up Pat King. <laughs> As one should. In an in an NHL All Star game, like how do you how do you not capitalize on the most glorious moment in I, in your career's history? I uh, I do love the trades involved because like when the NHL Players Association was being formed 
anyone who was like leading that. Like I'm pretty sure Ted Lindsay ended up in the Blackhawks for a year. Like they just send him to the bottom feeding NHL team. And that happened four or five sure. times where whoever was trying to make sure, the sure. move would be traded to the worst team just to make them go away. Like Yeah. So this caps. This exists. This doesn't. But it's all because of this why this exists. That's a good history there. This is this is your photo. It's quirky, face. and I'm never doing it again. The rest of it is on you. Well, just that point you said about trade before the. So it's happened twice in a row now this this year and last year that a player was traded. Both he said both. Both, both oh, more yeah, about yeah, and yeah. this year. Do you know who it was this year? No. Lidholm. He was traded from Calgary oh, to right. to um, Vancouver, Vancouver. mid flight right before the All Star game. So Which he it doesn't matter as much. Like the the fact that it was changing. What conference? It was the draft version. It didn't. Right. Well, I'm just saying, like, yeah, the draft version. But I'm just saying, like, you know, we we talked about how it was impressive to trade a player before. That, that Western yeah. But it, it has happened twice now, the back to back. So it was funny. There was a, I think it was Instagram, where people were going around the NHL All Star Game because they had all the graphics up outside the arena. That so it was Elias Lindholm with his Calgary garb, even though he was on Vancouver at the time. So people were taking selfies and sending them to the NHL. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Because. That's what you do. You're the internet's there to agitate people. It's what we the internet do best. And that's it. Shrems, that was a good story. That I was like a good it. Hijack. I'm never doing it again. So he's Shrems. I'm John. Phil, take us out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos and come back to another episode of Ugly Thirds. What'd you miss? I missed a Subban Winter Classic jersey nah. because of that story. Which Winter Classic? The, the white one against Boston. You'll never see it again. <sighs>